Welcome to another episode of the Sales Hunter Podcast. I'm Mark Hunter. What do you do when they say no? In the studio, on this episode, Richard Fenton, Andrea Waltz, we're going to talk about that because they got a new book out, When They Say No. So let's get into it. The show begins right now. You're listening to the Sales Hunter Podcast with Mark Hunter, where the focus is to help you as a sales leader sell with confidence and integrity. And now here's your host. Well, let's face it, we've all heard no from a customer and maybe we actually need to hear more often. And that's really kind of the one of the main things that comes out real quick in the book, When They Say No. Andrea Waltz and Richard Fenton, welcome to the show. Thank you for joining me. Hey, Mark. Hey, Mark. Great to be here. Hey, your first book, Go For No. Now, I'm not sure that was your first book, but it was the first book that I became familiar with. That is incredible, Go For No. And I love this one, When They Say No. This is a perfect sequel. So what comes after this? When they say yes or what? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. That's good. Well, uh, it's well, we like to joke that um, you know most authors and speakers put out a book every two, three, four years. Richard and I waited two decades, so I I don't know. I mean, God only knows what it'll be then. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, now let's dig dig into the book because okay. you, you really uncover and and I love how it is laid out because you can really use it as a reference guide. But you talk early on about how salespeople don't hear no enough. What's the premise behind that? Yeah, so you. go for no is is all about the idea that if you want more yeses in your business, if you want more yeses in your career, you've got to be willing to hear no more often. So it means taking more chances, making more asks in every category, whether it's appointment setting, closing the sale, asking for referrals. I mean, it applies across the board. So that's the fundamental strategy uh, with go for no. But then we realized that we're telling people, go out there and hear all, all these no's. And then, you know, after 20 years, it dawned on us, you know what? People still have a question like when I'm when I'm getting all these no's, then what, you guys? Then what do I do? Then what do I think? Then what do I say? And so that's why we finally decided to come out with this follow up. OK, now in the book, you've got so many strategies and I love them because they're all right there in the in the table of contents. Uh, what's the one that you guys run to the most when you hear no? Hmm. Well, I, I can I answer this? Then I'll let you. No, go. you've 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 already answered two questions. It's my turn. All right. Um, <laughs> you, 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 you can go ahead. We are listening to the power couple. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, one of ours, and I think is the most important thing, is that everybody focuses on closing the sale. You go to the library. There's you're going to find a hundred books on the sales shelf, right? You know, always be closing, close, 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 close early, close off, and everything's closing. Well. Where are the books on opening the sale? And I think when people are hearing no a lot, their problem may not be closing. Their problem may be opening. Are they opening the sale properly? You know, there's no like and trust idea. All things being equal, people will do business with people they know, like, and trust. Well, if, if somebody doesn't know you and if they don't like you or trust you, and then you ask for the sale at the end, well, the chances of getting a yes are going to be very minimal. So first thing we ask is if you're getting no, 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 back up. It's probably not closing. It's probably opening. Oh, Richard, I'll tell you what. Thank you for sharing that. You got to back up the audio and listen to what Richard said in the previous 75 seconds because it's gold. Many times the closing problem is not a close. How many times? I can't tell you the number of times I've gone into a company and the VP of sales, oh, we just can't close deals. We need training on closing. No, you need training on opening. Yeah. Why don't salespeople understand that? Hmm. That's a good question. Um, I think it's just because historically uh, we focus on the close and the close is, is the scariest, right? It's the toughest. And we all know that if you don't uh, proactively ask and if you just kind of share a bunch of stuff and then let it linger that the close isn't going to happen. And so uh, I think that's why so much of the focus is there because it is the fear filled part. The top, the part where we get to talk <laughs> is the right. fun, easy part. Right. Yeah. And right. there's a tendency, Mark, I think there's a tendency to focus on, you know, what is it, what is it that puts the points on the board? Right. 
that's when you put the ball in the end zone. Boy, we have to score. If we don't score, then you know we haven't turned our invested time into profitable time. But that's like pretending that the most important part of golf is putting, like somehow driving and chipping and all of the rest of golf doesn't matter. So I think it's just the focus on the fact that money appears at the close. And so therefore we think it's the most important thing, but we don't realize the entire open was putting ourselves in scoring position. Yeah. Okay. So let me back up and get you to answer the question. When they do say no, what do you guys do? So, uh, well, I will tell you this. One of the things that we learned and we talk, we talk about it in the book is uh, for us personally, we learned to make sure that we were talking to the right person. And that is, I think, a big one. You know, a lot of times if you, and we also learned not only talk to the right person, but be willing to hear no early in the process. So our process literally is one of disqualification instead of qualification. We want to know as quickly as possible whether this prospect is good for us or not. And it will save them a lot of time as well. So we ask some real simple, straightforward questions. It's respectful to their time. If they say no to those questions, we can say, great, have a great day and move on and find somebody who does have a need and want for what we offer. Well, I, I, I love that answer and I totally agree. We, we, we don't do a good enough job qualifying fast upfront. Again, that's a weakness in the sales community. And I, I love it how in your book, one of the, and I love the short chapters, it's next, next, hmm. just we, we move on. And yet some people will push back on that. Oh no, you can never, never give up, never give up, never give up, never give up, never give up. But I think I, I if I understand your philosophy, you, you do give up and you say, I'm going, I'm going someplace else, right? Yeah. Well, you know, part of the thing is you have to ask yourself, are you, are you selling to a limited um, base of prospects? And so, for example, um, the Girl Scout cookies girl. You know, she shows up on the door. She knock, knock, knock. Hi, want to buy Girl Scout cookies? You say no. Um, she's just going to turn and go next door and next door and next door because there's always a next door. And so in her case, the quantity of calls saying next becomes the, the, the most important factor in her in her sales ability. However, if you've got somebody who sells um, airplane parts to Boeing, um, or maybe one of the four or five or six manufacturers in the world who make airplanes still. Well, after the, after the sixth one, there ain't no next. Okay. <laughs> there is no moving on. So now suddenly the quality of each interaction and that opening of the sale and the no like trust becomes so much more important. So we were a little guilty in the beginning with go for no. We kind of took the attitude that next would work for everybody. Hey, when they say no, just say next. Well, it's right a lot of the time, but it's not right all of the time. And so you really have to dig a little bit deeper, you know, when you're hearing the word no, um, you know, exactly what are your what are your options in order to just say next and to move along? I love I love what you're talking about here, because, again, every situation is different. You can't take a universal response that somebody reads in a book and apply it everywhere because right. there are exceptions. And hey, with this, we want to say I've got I'm talking with with Andrea Waltz, Richard Fenton, authors of the new book, When They Say No. You're listening to the Sales Center podcast. Did you know that we were named as the number one new sales podcast for 2022 by Apple Music. Pretty cool. Yeah, we, we think so. Leave us a review if you get a chance, please, because it's really how we grow by you sharing the news with other people. But back to the interview here. I, I want to dig in because one of the hallmarks of your books is you write them very simplistic. So who is the perfect person? And, and, and I mean simplistic as a compliment. I don't mean that as a negative. I mean that absolutely because it, it, it's something that I can read. And as I've been reading this book, I'm saying, wait a minute, I'm going to go back and read it again and again and again, just like Go For No. Go For No becomes one of those books that you got to just <clears throat> put into your brain time and time again. But if, if you were to say, who is the perfect person who should be reading this? That is, that, a really, that is a really good question. Um, yeah, who is our target audience? So it's <laughs> It's, People well, who pay money, right? No, okay. That's, that's right. People who, anybody who wants a book or, or a doorstop or, yeah. Um, a door, no, come on, No, Andrea. I'm joking. I'm joking. Yeah. So listen, I we take simplistic. My, book, my books are doorstops, okay? <laughs> so we take simplistic as a compliment because, uh, as you meant it, um, 
because we want it to be highly consumable, like a, a good potato chip, right? You just, you can eat it and you, you can't stop. So just keep flipping the pages and reading more. We want it jam packed with information. Um, it's really anybody that, that gets what I would call a significant number of no's in their, uh, in, in their day-to-day, week-to-week sales operation. So, I mean, if you, if, if you are someone who doesn't face prospects, you're not prospecting, you're not customer facing, you don't hear no very often, then it may not be as effective. But if you are working with customers and prospects at all, and you have to hear no's every now and then, you want to have these, it's, it's almost like a recipe book where you can flip through and pull out a nugget or two to help you to, to figure out, okay, I'm hearing no, what, what is my issue? And uh, I will jump back to and, and answer the question because I mm. loved it so much. And that's why I wanted to steal it from Richard is uh, what things do we use? And my favorite one, and we use this as well, is the, uh, the advice of change your state. So we get asked all the time from people who hear no a lot. What do I do when I'm just feeling stressed, down, depressed? Uh, I'm just getting a, a series of no's and what do I do? And so change your state is our advice, which literally means change your physiology. So get up, move, go to the gym, put on some good music. Do not Whatever you do, jump on social media. If you're feeling down and dejected, that is the last strategy you want to employ. But change your state and your physiology so that you get out of that mindset and then you can come back to your desk uh, an hour or two later and you feel refreshed and you feel differently. I like that approach because really what you're saying is you're almost admitting, okay, it's not working. I've got to stop. i got to stop and regroup and refuel. And like I said, change your physiology. You know, I, I think one of the reasons, I mean, people procrastinate is because of this whole no. And when they say no, they automatically assume, well, customer doesn't want it. I'm just, uh, uh. but what, what I like about this is when they say no, is again, you give strategies as to how to power past that, how to power past that with the customer. So what, what's, what's a strategy that, you, you know, customer says when they say no, to, to having a follow-up meeting. How, how should a salesperson handle that? Um, I will take, I will take that one. And by the way, when you were asking before, who was the perfect person, I didn't know you meant customers. That's, I thought you meant of the two of us. Oh. So, <laughs> Cause I, I would have pointed over here because I'm, I'm smart. Um, uh, what was the question? I forgot what I was going to say. Follow up. Follow oh, follow, follow up. Um, I think the biggest, I think the biggest thing that happens is when people get a no and they're like, like, we're not going to buy today or, or no, thanks. You know, thanks for coming by. I think the biggest problem is that salespeople act dejected. They immediately are like, oh, okay, well, you know, okay, thanks for letting me come by. We say to always, always like throw the person, throw the prospect off, you know, by saying like, hey, fantastic. You know, because it's the last thing they expect you to say. Of course you want to think about it. And you would be the very rare prospect if you didn't want some time to think about it. But while I've got you here, I just want to make sure that I've answered all the questions I can answer today. So, you know, is there anything though you want to ask me before, you know, be, before I, you know, head out? I mean, in other words, you're, you're giving them permission to end the meeting. You're saying it's no problem, but you're not just turning and running, right? Ah, that was our dog. That's okay. <laughs> you're, you're, you're not, you're not just turning and running. Um, and, and then also, you know, get permission, get, you yeah, know, get permission, yeah. just say, okay, great. You know, can I, can I follow up with you in uh, three months and then make sure that you do. So in other words, when you follow up, you're actually fulfilling a promise. You're not just following up to annoy. You've said, I will follow up with you in three months. And then three months you call back and you say, Hey, I'm following up like I promised. And now suddenly they get to know you like you and trust you because you're a person of your word. So there's always opportunities to work through these no situations. I like what you said there because you, you said w when they say no, you actually compliment them on the no. You're actually complimenting them. And, and that really does disarm them because they weren't expecting that from a salesperson. Right. What? Really? Wow. So that is amazing. And, and then you come back around and, and by really complimenting them, 
you disarm them. Oh, by the way, my theory, if, if my bot, if my dog ever barks, I go super sales dog has just closed another sale. So <laughs> nice. Thank you for, thank yeah, you for yeah. that. It's, you, you can use that. I stole it from somebody else. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. So anyway, anyway, but anyway, I, so I love, I love that strategy. What, what's another strategy? Let, share with us a couple, couple more strategies when they say no, what should we do? Well, uh, one of my favorites is, um, to ask yourself if this really is a no. And too often as salespeople, I think we see rejection where it doesn't actually exist. We we kind of make up the scenario in our head and just go, oh, it's a no. Really, did they actually say right. no? Or did they just not call you back? Or did they give you some other kind of smoke screeny thing or whatever? And you just take that as a no. And so really making sure that you heard no and getting that clarification, that communication is so key. So if you just, if you did nothing else with the 41 strategies, but you just made sure that what when you really uh, heard what you believed was a no was in fact, and you got that clarity, I mean, I think your sales could, could 10x just from that, just from really making sure. And if it's not then dig in, ask some more questions, stay engaged. Yeah, and if people read our book, uh, they're gonna see there's 41 strategies in there. We didn't number them because we don't want people to think that the first one was more important than the 41st. Um, if they read through it and they read through it maybe every 30 days, because it's a short book, they're gonna find that probably 10 or 20 of the things in there apply to them in some right. way, shape or form. And you know, one of my favorites is, is simply this, it's, you know, if you're, if you're hearing a lot of no's, maybe you're overdoing the passion. Now that's the opposite of what everybody tells you, right? If, if somebody doesn't get set on fire, there will be no sale. Well, sometimes we get a little too passionate thinking that passion is going to carry the day. And even right here, if I get passionate with you, I'm like, Mark, this is great. No, you've got to see this, right? Wait, well, let me tell you about the next thing. Oh, here's another reason you should buy. The minute I get passionate and start leaning towards you, even through video, your tendency is to want to lean back. Mm -hmm. It moves people away. And so a great argument does not need to be passionate in terms of volume or hand gestures. It just needs to be passionate in terms of the actual words being used. And so there's 41 things in the book like that. And that's kind of what our goal was. But I'll tell you what, you just touched on something. There's several things, I'll, several things I want to comment on. Passion is always a great way to warm the customer up, but passion gone too far turns them off. Mm. And there is that there is that fine line on there. But I love what you were talking about, uh, you know, Andrea, in terms of assumption. Salespeople are so guilty, so bad at making assumption. Oh, the person had I, I've tried to call them three times and they haven't called me back. They must not be interested. Mm -hmm. How do you know you haven't had a conversation with them? And you made the comment that you're right. I think salespeople just assume no. We, we, we just, we, we just assume that we assume that we're hearing no, the objection. And, and again, love to get your comments on this. Uh, the objection that the customer throws out, and it's not really a meaningful customer. It's, it's not the price or something of that nature. It's just and what, but they're kind of eh, resistant to it. What's a quick way to kind of pound our way through that? Well, I will tell you this, and we have a friend in uh, Hawaii. His name is Ron Martin. Ron puts it a little more bluntly than, than we put it, but Ron says, buyers are liars. And you hear that and it just kind of makes your blood curdle. Like, oh, that's a terrible thing to say. But it's true because as customers, we know that when we go into a place of business, pick an auto dealership, for example, as the classic example, Right. I mean, we'll sit in the car in advance and say, OK, here's the most we're going to spend. If they don't have a car with X, Y and Z on it, we're not buying. No matter what they do, we want to think about it. Right. Well, all of this stuff, when we go in, we've like armed ourselves with untruths, fibs, if you will, things that just to push the salesperson away because we're afraid they're going to make us buy something that's wrong. Our fear of making a mistake has turned us into people who have become very defensive. And so when you take it from the other side and you're a salesperson and somebody says no to you or they're throwing an objection at you, first thing is like, well, wait a second. You know, 
is this is this objection real? Like Andrea says, is this no real? Well, is the objection real? Or are they just being defensive? And so that's why it's so important to look at every no and every objection as a gift. You know, a lot of people, a lot of salespeople look at it as a snake. You know, we got an objection. Oh, I got a snake. I got to stay away from it. No, it's a nicely wrapped gift. And you have to open the box and look inside. And inside the gift is going to be what you need in order to diffuse the objection and move you know, forward in the sale. So um, that, that's kind of our... Yeah, and the, and the fastest way to diffuse those, and this is a tough thing to sometimes uh, to do, but in, in that moment, you know, to always think about what can, I, what, what can I ask to be curious? So one great question is, well, let me just ask you this question. If that weren't the issue, let's just pretend that, that the thing that is holding you up right now was not the issue at all, didn't even exist then would you be interested in going forward? And, and then if, then they may raise, raise another issue or if they say, well, yeah, then I would, then okay, then you've really isolated a true objection and now you can figure out how, how to get around it. Maybe it's pushing things off for a ways or who, who knows, but at least you know what you're really dealing with. You, you, fi you finally found the truth. Wow, I, I, I love what you're talking about there. Hey, we got to wrap up the show here in just a bit. The book, When They Say No, I've been talking today with Andrea Waltz, Richard Fenton. And of course, they're also the authors of the book, Go For No, which came out 20 years ago. So they don't rush to get the next book out. So that means this is good. That, mean, that means you got to get it. Hey, how do people get in touch with you? How do people get the book? We are well branded. So <laughs> it's uh, they can go to whensaysaynobook.com, takes them right to the page on Amazon. Or if you type in Go For No, you'll find our Twitter page, Instagram, all that good stuff. Terrific, terrific. Hey, and 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 I love talking to you because I love both of you. Your sa the sales strategy, the sales approach. Sales is not as complicated as we make it out to be, and and I think we as salespeople um, create our own obstacles. But anyway, with that, we want to say thank you for listening. And my gift to you for watching the show is to check out the show notes because I've got a link in there to grab our newest ebook on prospecting. And hey, we do sincerely hope that you get value from watching each episode of the Sales Center. Each week you get two podcasts, one a short one with me, just with a short topic, and the second one, a longer one like we're having today with Richard and Andrea. Thank you for listening to the Sales Center podcast, your source, your location for great insights you can run with and use right now. Richard, Andrea, thank you for making the Sales Center podcast special. Thank you, Mark. It was fun. Our pleasure. Great selling, everyone.